this isn't necessarily surprising. Like anyone, especially people on my podcast who knows about Debbie Wasserman Schultz, like we've followed her on this show for years. And there's so many things that are wrong with Debbie Wasserman Schultz. I think she's probably one of the worst Democrats, the most, you know, special interest backed, most conservative. Um, but for all of her flaws, for all of the criticisms that the left rightfully has of Debbie Wasserman Schultz, you know, she is taking her hubris to the next level. She's running for a leadership position. Talk through this because when I, yeah, when I saw this, I was absolutely just like shocked. Like I laughed. It's like, how, <laughs> how do you have the gall to do this? Like, what is she running for? She is running to be chair of appropriations committee, which, um, you know, and even forget the forget the appearances of impropriety and all of that stuff. If you just even put that aside and you just look at how she managed the DNC from a perspective of their finances and the amount of seats they lost in the country. So I'm talking just management, not even the other stuff. She was it was a total failure. You know, I mean, they lost more than a thousand seats when she was head of the DNC. They they ran, they ran themselves into the ground financially. So why would we want that person in charge of the money? Yeah. And I mean, that's that's the thing. It's like if you've already proven to be a failure in a position of leadership that actually has influence over democracy, you shouldn't ever run for leadership again. I mean, she should be lucky that she's still in Congress. So it, it's shocking to me that she chose to run. I mean, I'm sure that the predatory payday lender industry is just ecstatic about the fact that she's <laughs> running for leadership. But it's just it's honestly shocking. Now, Another aspect about Debbie Wasserman Schultz is basically what I see, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, is that she's kind of pretending like you don't exist. You're not really there. Although <laughs> oh, yeah. she did purchase some uh, web domains with your name. Talk through this. You're the one who actually broke this story. <laughs> this is insane to me. Okay, so I wish you could almost demonstrate it as I'm telling you, but so we only inadvertently found out about this. But if you go to jenperlman.com, or jenperlmanforcongress.com, they link directly to her congressional webpage, not a campaign page. She didn't just squat on the domains, because to be honest with you, you know, we're rookies, so we didn't buy up all the names. And so this is the kind of thing that happens. I get it. But it's the fact that they go to her congressional webpage, like her official page is my congressperson, and I am still a constituent. And it's just... I am sure it's just this side of legal. I'm sure it is. And if it isn't, I'm sure her hands are clean because the company is in Panama that bought the domain. I'm sure you're surprised to hear it's Panamanian. And so I'm sure she's clean, but it is so unethical to me. It's just so incredibly unethical. So, yeah, it's funny. She has ghosted me, but yet she relishes my name, apparently. Yeah, I mean, hey, if you're going to buy the domains, then that's at least a tacit admission that she knows that you exist as a human being, oh, yeah. why not actually be brave and debate you? Um, I think oh, no, that the people in, you know, Florida's 23rd Congressional District, they deserve to see their options. But I mean, of course, this is what we see. I mean, it's not necessarily shocking. Incumbent Democrats, they like to pretend as if their opponents don't exist, even if they're facing pretty serious primary challenges. Um, and this isn't the only race. So I mean, it's kind of just par for the course, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we should accept it. It just, it's frustrating to see the things that are being done. Oh, yeah. I, you know firsthand, so I don't have to explain it to you. 